how long the fade out is on mine or because I think I still have it ducking my audio <laughs> when I play yeah. the, the intro song. So Must I, didn't be, want, like, I don't know talking. if you were. Yeah, I don't know if you were actually talking there during that trail end, but if you were, I did not hear you. And yeah, neither did scene. anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's why I think I, I think I'm still uh, ducking myself there, uh, which wasn't a problem the last time when I drove the stream. But um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I failed my my learner's permit. Um, I failed my driving test, uh, much like real life. Actually, uh, I failed the Ooth. first time, so uh, right. you got to got to retry that. again. Yeah, you remember that? Oh man, I do I was, remember that. <laughs> I was like, you know, because growing up where we did, it's like you couldn't do anything if you didn't have a driver's license, right? Like you had to have a driver's license to to go anywhere to have fun. Um, yeah. And I remember failing. I failed for a stupid reason too. Um, yeah. What was it? So I come up to a stop sign, four way stop, and I stop, and then the car to the left of me stops. But of course, when you're in the drive test, you're stopping for like an inordinate amount of time, right? You're stopping for the full like two seconds and you're looking both ways and you look again. So then I started to go because, you know, I had the right of way, but this guy didn't stop for the full, you know, two seconds. So he started going and the instructor yelled as I'm looking over at him, should I stop? And then, I, you know, obviously put on the brakes, but that's enough to say like, no, you're, you're done. Right? And I'm like, okay, well, whatever. Thanks, uh, dude. <laughs> you, you know, it's it's my fault too. Like, I'm not gonna, you know, like uh, try to cop out of that. But it's like one of those situations where even if I had anticipated it, I would have had to do some like jerk movement of like stopping, even though I have the right of way. Even all all these things that happened, um, I'm sure there was a way I could have gotten out that and still pass. But it was just a bad circumstance. Like, it's a bad uh, perfect storm of situations, uh, which caused me to then have to wait the what was it, like week seven days some crazy probationary period um, before you can take it again because you're under 18 uh, mm, <laughs> can just get right. back in line and make another dmv appointment so like i'd like to take the test again please <laughs> yeah <laughs> this time i'll do better i promise yeah <laughs> <laughs> um no so okay but back back to my coffee story because i was talking about that before before we started um it, it's it's friday and fridays for me mean it's fancy friday and uh we usually go out and get like a fancy cup of coffee now, because everything is shut down, that means for me, uh, fan fancy coffee is let's go to uh, the Starbucks that's, you know, a mile away <laughs> and get a coffee from them because mm -hmm. I don't have to um, make it. Uh, what's up, Wolf Spain? Hey, good to see everyone in chat. Yes. Whoop, whoop. Uh, so walk up to the Starbucks, do my mobile order thing, and I walk up there. And I'm looking forward to my, you know, like my hot cocoa coffee which is just a, a mocha latte right like with ice because it's warm out mm -hmm. so i get there and everyone's picking up their stuff you know because we have the kids and uh and my wife with us and I'm, I'm looking at mine and it looks a lot it looks really light it doesn't really look nice and dark like uh, the mocha i want you know so i look at it and i look at the label and the label says it should be that i'm like whatever you know like there was it was clearly busy i didn't want to like you know intrude and it could have yeah, gone. Well, it's not even being that guy, right? The order was you know, clearly wrong. Um, I just assumed that they forgot to put the chocolate sauce in and it would just be like a, you know, a latte. And that, that would be OK with me. No, it turns out that it was like an iced coffee with cream and sugar and like it was super sweet. And I was like, I don't like oh. any of this right now. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, my first Fancy Friday back after being evacuated. Uh, meant I got a drink that I did not really uh, want, and I was okay with it. I still got coffee. I still got some caffeine. I still did a fancy Friday. I didn't have to make it myself, so I can't, can't complain too much. It's like it's a, it's a very first world problem, right? Like, they messed up my coffee order again. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, so yeah, let's talk about the, the fire thing real quick before we get into everything. Because um, yeah. yes, yeah. Uh, thank you everyone for the the patience. Um, up in Northern California, where I live, obviously there have been lots of fires caused by the lightning strikes, uh, and that meant a lot of us had to evacuate um, just for like facilitation or easier facilitation for you know uh, firefighters and first responders to get to the places they need to go, and in case you know the winds decide to change or things started coming to have everyone already out. So um, we had kind of an advanced warning to evacuate. Uh, so we knew at least what to grab. 
um, and what to do. So we did all that stuff. We grabbed everything. We um, stayed with a, a friend for the first night and then stayed in a hotel uh, the rest of the nights. And then we were able to come back this week, uh, which has been great. Uh, school got postponed for all the kids. So we're we're slowly settling back into to normal life. Um, nice. And big thanks to you, Steve, for um, taking care of the podcast while I was out. No doing problem. Some, some music production stuff, which I was super intrigued to see and took yeah. me down the rabbit hole of trying to find, you know, like a Guilty Gear uh, album, the original soundtrack that's not a cover. Um, <laughs> you know how I tried getting it way back in the day in high school? Uh, so they have the OST on the actual game, right? Like there's a music player section, like menu that you can go through and play all the tracks, right? Yeah. So at that particular time, it was like right before I got my first car and like I was kind of driving to high school at that point and it was my dad's truck that I was driving and that truck only had a tape player so me I recorded all of the songs I wanted onto a cassette tape and then just played that (laughs) the sound test feature right so like on the disc you went to the sound testing you had plugged your playstation you know components you know audios the the left and right into your like boombox stereo yeah kid in the 90s or 2000s had right yep and then you yep. put in a blank tape and you hit the record and press yep. the play that was oh, exactly man. it <laughs> that's that's legit like that's uh <laughs> oh good times but yeah trying to find like uh, a disc copy like of the original soundtrack it's almost impossible like i don't know where to get it it's it's crazy i have to resort to low quality youtube rips Oh, yeah. And that was the thing, too, is like all the YouTube playlists, like they're so random, like they're just a hodgepodge of things like thrown together. Oh. Yeah. Sea Gear is, is so good that it deserves better treatment than just getting like this half a Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Anyway, shall we get this thing kicked off with the song stuck in our head? Yeah, dude. Uh, why don't you go first? I love your timestamp in this one, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so um, the song that's been stuck in my head this week is by the band Insomnium. Um, they're really cool. I think I may have featured them once before. Um, they're from Finland. They're kind of like a melodic death metal, slight black metal influences, I guess you could say. But they're not like an overly technical band. But like what they do is they're really good at. Um, they're really good at making melodies, like kind of building up this atmosphere. Really good riffing, just all around awesome band. I recently found out, and I feel like I may have learned this before and then I just forgot, um, but one of their current guitarists is the original guitarist for Sonata Arctica, um, Yanni Lemitainen or some crap like that. I can't know. I don't know how to pronounce the Finnish <laughs> last name. Like that, huh? oh. I know. It's it's hard. I don't I don't want to butcher it too much. But anyway, so I got You're really like excited. A teacher, man. Like every day is like, <laughs> now you know what <laughs> yeah. it feels like. Just every yeah. every time you come on the podcast, if you want to mention something, be like, uh, so and so. Yep, yep. So um, I uh, remember that they released an album uh, not too long ago. So I went and listened to it. Solid album. Can't complain. There's one song on there, um, Corellia, that's an instrumental um, that I really, really like. Um, it's just very epic and melodic. Um, so at about uh, four minutes and 20 seconds in, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and take a listen here. Nice. Nice. It's like the slow death metal power, like power metal section, right? Like it's it's so many different forms of metal, like in one thing. Like you can't really pinpoint it, and that's what I love about it. Tremolo picking in there, too. I was just going to say it. (laughs) Whammy dive bomb. Oh, yeah, man. (laughs) Get all the elements in there. And then we change the key and just like, yes. I think this was a study music that you had recommended for me. So I'm like, I feel like I've heard this song in the study playlist that I made. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I probably 
but yeah this song um it's really good um it doesn't as far as like tone wise overall like it doesn't way too far from this it kind of starts off slow and, and builds up um to this and then has a nice fade out at the end um but yeah i listened to this album this week and i love it it's great and i just got super excited that uh Yanni is in this band because I hadn't heard of from him in a long time. I'm like, where did he go? <laughs> where is it? Yeah. Oh, uh, cool. All right. So uh, on my end of things, um, first things first is I actually brought an adult beverage um, tonight. The, the one night I didn't bring one. Come I know. On. I know. That's that's why I do it. I do it because oh. I know that uh, that you're not going to bring it. So I have a, a ballast point sculpin. You have you know? a good car. Man, a good one too. Oh. I was evacuated and I needed, you know, something to drink. So I'm gonna show off the one feature of my desk here, which uh, I get to use every once in a while, which is the built-in bottle opener. Oh no! Oh, we heard it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the bottle got falling on the floor too. So yeah. uh, cheers, guys. It's uh, cheers. Got some high quality H2O. H2O. All right, now. Yep. We'll do that. How have we only oh. consumed two beers to date? No, because it's beer plus. That's what it is. Hey, oh, there we go. <laughs> Down the hatch. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. So tell uh, us a little bit about the song stuck in your head. Yeah. So song stuck in my head. Um, I I love this band a lot, and yeah, I know. No, right? Uh, it's not that band. It's not the band <laughs> you're thinking of. Um, it's the other band. <laughs> it's the other three-word band that I really, really enjoy. I've got um, something to tell you after after uh, we play this song, but just keep okay. going. Okay. Just remind me. Okay, okay. Um, so Protest the Hero released an album not too long ago, and I've listened to that album um, multiple times. Great album. Uh, but they also now released a couple singles, and I just got around to listening to those. Uh, I hadn't been listening to too much music because of the um, the whole evacuation thing. Uh, mm-hmm. I just didn't have like the right setup or like find the time, um, even mm-hmm. with all the pairs of headphones, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you had ample opportunities <laughs> or ways to to consume it, but <laughs> well, we'll we'll talk about this a little bit too. Um, okay. So <laughs> they they released a couple singles, uh, and one of them is called Gift Horse, and it kind of encompasses everything that I love about Protest the Hero, like all in this one song. So much like you said, you know, with the Insomnium track, how you know it kind of stayed on this track, you know, or didn't like sway too much from tempo. This protest, the hero one, it does the same while also, we also showcasing like all the parts that I enjoy about protest, the hero, like timing and, um, you know, just odd time changes and variations in, you know, just the song composure and in incorporating different like elements. Um, I think it was really cool. So the song is gift horse and about 41 seconds in, um, you get this really nice, uh, guitar tone, uh, as they're going into, um, like the verse. And then just for a solid minute, like I'm just loving all the variation that they're doing all around the central, like, um, melody. It's just, it's, it's great. Nice. Chill right now. You know, it's been building up to this for the last third seconds, too. Yep. Yeah, that's super interesting sounding. Yep. Oh, dang. Yeah. Nice bass fill. But, like, you know, Rody Blythe again. Yes. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but they had some synth in, too, a little bit. I don't know if you heard that in, in, your, in your mix. Uh, it was a little bit hard to hear. Hey, the Skype filter makes everything hard to hear except for bass. Skype loves bass. Yeah, it really does. It really does. A little bass heavy. <laughs> yeah. 
But uh, this this song I've listened to on repeat, and which is something I rarely do, but I listen to this song at least three times in a row, and I just nice. You you got to listen to Protest the Hero, man. You you got to. I, do I it. know. You I know. I'll get there. I'll get I'm not, there. We we talked about how we're supposed to practice this thing, uh, and obviously I'm not doing it by telling you just to listen to it. Um, but you're gonna tell me a thing. What's the thing? Yeah. So um, I just realized that, like, as I'm getting stuff queued up, um, all the album artwork for said cu- upcoming song automatically shows up. So it's oh, almost yeah, yeah. like, OK, you knew that. Like, I'm, I'm teasing, you know, the album okay. that's already there. Right. OK. Um, all right. As long as you knew, because I didn't know that until just now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it makes it makes my long, you know, drawn out teases a little bit more um, anticlimactic. But, uh, hey, yeah. you know. No, it's all good then. As long as we're on the same page, that's totally fine. Um, Let's move on into some follow-up. I think you got a little bit of follow-up, yeah? Yeah, so um, I mentioned, you know, we evacuated in. This isn't the first time I've had to evacuate because of fires in California. Um, You know, living in California, living in Southern California, in 2007, there were a a bunch of fires that also kind of affected and caused like a – bunch of evacuations and um at that time i was still living with my mom and my mom lived out you know kind of in the country countryside of things in san diego county uh, and we were pretty close to a fire there that we had to evacuate from and that time we had like goats and chickens and cats and dogs and you know did you have just, a steer at that time too no we did not have a steer at that okay. time <laughs> no. i remember oh, you had a steer man. at one time yeah it was not that time and we okay. were out of pig phase at that point too i think we didn't oh, have any yep. pigs so that was that was those are all good things um yes. because the horse trailer that we had was just a two you know two horse trailer um so we could only fit you know so many animals so our, our mini menagerie of animals we had to take with us you know when we evacuated <laughs> Um, and we ended up, you know, going to like one of the high schools was, was the evacuation center. And then we ended up like staying in a warehouse or le- letting the animals stay in a warehouse, you know, and then mm-hmm. sleeping in a conference room. Uh, <laughs> for, for so the thing is, is that after you've gone through the evacuation once, you kind of know what to bring. Right. And then you always have kind of like that that go bag or that go. Here's what I need to grab if we need to go mentality. Um mm-hmm. And when we, you know, knew the fires were coming up here, it was kind of like, all right, I got to take stock, you know, like figure out what we're going to take with us. And, you know, um, it was easy for me to kind of put down into and especially because I'm down to one car. I know I told you that earlier in the show. So so right now we have just the van, um, just our touring van, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Nice twist. (laughs) Yes, yes. Uh, So I can only fill up so many things and we have a dog with us. And so I was like, okay, I got to fit the crate and the dog that's already like a big, you know, big Mm. amount of space. Uh, and then what else am I going to take? Right? Like, do I take all my guitars? Do I take all my headphones? Like, do I take like every computer that I have? Do what do I take? You know? Yeah. So the question I have kind of goes to you to flip the flip the script is what would you take in your go? Um, so I'm fairly classic in this regard. So like obviously pictures, like whatever like photo albums you have. So if we're considering that a given, the next thing I'm going for is all of my backup hard drives with all of like the music I've made over you know like my entire musical career. So that's irreplaceable. So those are going first. Um, probably my laptop now because it's just easy to transport. Um, and then if I have room and time, I'm going to start grabbing guitars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it, yeah, photo albums, all this stuff is, is a must, right? Um, mm-hmm. the kids have a bunch of artwork, right? So we had to grab all of their artwork and stuff like that. Cause that stuff can't be replaced. Uh, mm-hmm. and then we had like family stuff that has been made like, um, blankets textiles that have been made by grandparents that are no longer living and all of that kind of stuff so all that stuff has to come to and then anything that was like personal that you could not replace right uh right. and then it comes to like all of the things like all right what else can i fit and i have all my guitars in cases you know and i have all my headphones in cases and i'm like mm, okay well what am i gonna take with me right uh i ended up taking like four or five pairs of headphones i think um just because that's what I had with me. I left a bunch behind. <laughs> that's uh, what you had with you. <laughs> and I, I, I left the guitars to burn. Um, oh, boy. Yeah, I mean, you got to make hard choices sometimes. And <laughs> the, the, way, the way I justified it to my, to my inner brain was, I was like, well, if things get really bad, I'm going to have to give headphones to all the kids to keep them sane. <laughs> so that's easier to transport. 
And <laughs> you're also looking out for your mental health too. <laughs> and the guitars that I have, there's only one that I kind of have some sentimental value to. And it's, you know, the first guitar I have, and it's like a $99 guitar. So I'm like, really yeah. what am I losing, you know? Yeah. I mean, if I, I grabbed my like sentimental guitar, like it's, it's essentially worthless to anyone except me. So <laughs> I totally get uh, that. Yeah. But I would secretly hope, you know, if, you know, hopefully this never happens, but if, you know, if I ever affected a house that I had that it would leave like a charred version of that, you know, guitar, if I left it behind and then you'd have like this, like great, super hardcore, like charred, you know, blackened, like, Plexi. <laughs> everything would be melted you know from all the finish and the lacquer and stuff like that but you know yeah however much is left over you could display and be like this was once mine <laughs> here's what remains of my first guitar i shredded so hard that it caught on fire <laughs> you tell this wild story about <laughs> it that's awesome <laughs> uh, yeah so i mean like i, I think it, it's worth you know calling out the things that are important right yeah pets hard drive sentimental items photos anything else uh pop mm-hmm. culture's got it got it down in for the chat for sure for sure hard drives is, is a good one too right because like you think about like computers especially like desktop computers you're like oh my gosh how am i going to fit this or how am i going to plug everything it's like if you just yank the hard drives on that right especially if you're smart like you good job being smart doing external hard drive stuff mm-hmm. um next step is back them up to the cloud because then you don't have to even take the external hard drives yep um, Yep, I'll I'll get there eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, talk to me. We can we can do things. All right, cool, cool. We should do some I, stuff I, as long as <laughs> I, we can we can do some stuff as long as California doesn't completely fall off the map. If that doesn't happen, then we're fine. Okay. As long as both <laughs> of our houses don't burn down at the same time, we'll be good. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, cool. So shall we? We're in your yep yep my we're underground your corner. corner. Cool. So since um, it's been kind of a little bit since we've had a regular episode like this, um, I figured another good opportunity to do another twofer for my underground corner here. So um, I have been listening to a lot of new music lately. Um, There's two bands that are quite opposite from each other that I really enjoyed, um, but I'm going to share with you now. So the first one that I stumbled across... um, was from i think i found them on instagram actually from like napalm or whatever label they're signed to um they showed like a little snippet of a music video um, that they just released for their new single so the band is called warfect um like defect i would imagine but like like perfect but or perfect yeah so like you're just replacing that prefix with war my band does it too. It's just a thing that metal bands do occasionally. Just replace war as a, pre- a prefix in some other word. War goes with every... Wait a minute. No, that's not... <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it works. Sometimes it's, it doesn't. And, you know, we all just try to run with it. Um, so the new single that they released is called Pestilence. Now, this band is really awesome. I had always thought about a combination of, like, really fast, like, thrash speed metal with some elements of black metal and this band nails it um they've got the really awesome black metal vocals um there's some other sections like overall that sound pretty black metal but for the majority of like the music itself it sounds pretty um speedy thrash metal so we'll go ahead and take a listen to uh the song uh, pestilence by warfect let's see here got that so much to do all right Ooh. And it's like mixed really well too. It just sounds yeah. great. And I have a feeling you're gonna like this band. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean the you know, little slides there are doing it for me, right? Ooh, yeah, it almost right. reminds me of like some uh, old Arch Enemy like vocals. That's that's tight. 
I know. This band is just so freaking good. Like, the speed and precision of everything is just amazing. It's tight, you know? So oh, tight, bro. You know, what's that guy in uh, Breaking Bad? Tight, tight, tight! <laughs> you know, every time. <laughs> Tuco. Yeah, yep. Oh, it's it. <laughs> oh. Uh, tight, tight, tight! Tight, tight! <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man, I need to rewatch stuff. Breaking Bad now. Ugh. Yeah, we're actually going to probably be starting it up pretty soon. Um, we're just kind of binging through a few other shows first, but it's been in the uh well, let's talk with my that. wife and I. We should. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. We'll do a post, right. uh, post episode, you know, breakdown of each one. Yeah. So we're halfway through your twofer. Yes, halfway through the twofer. Um, the next band that I'm featuring is called Bell Witch. Um, I discovered this band. I don't want to say by mistake, but I definitely stumbled into it. And the way I stumbled into it is because on Facebook, I see a lot or I'm a part of different groups for metal music and stuff. And there's within those groups, a lot of um, album artists. Um, so the actual artists who create the you know cover art for different metal bands and whatnot, they're always promoting their stuff in there, which is really awesome to see. Um, and I remember this particular uh, album cover that I saw that looked really, really epic and dark and like definitely felt like a black metal album cover in a way, right? Um, like very mysterious and ominous. And um, surely, uh, sure enough, in my Spotify recommendations, I see this thing come up and I'm just like, I recognize that album art. I'm going to check it out now. And uh, <laughs> I was not disappointed. But Adam, you're going to hate me for this because this song is uh, is one song for the entire album. And it's just under an hour and a half. What? <laughs> this is probably like, the longest single metal song like I've heard to date. Dude. <laughs> okay, so let's let's not okay, let's not dismiss the fact that yes, this is the longest song. I'm just thinking now because we're in the music production, you know, kind of like a uh, kick here. Like mm-hmm. how the heck would you do that? Like I, you know, I've it, thought about this. Go ahead, though. Okay. You you have thought about this. And I'm like I get markers and I get all that kind of stuff, but I'm like, but unless the song is going to sound the same, right? You're going to have like 128 instruments minimum in this thing just uh (laughs) (laughs) well i i see where you're coming from and like if you're if you're gonna imagine that this um that this is gonna be very like changing over time right then yeah you're gonna certainly need to add more instruments but like they have a very limited this band has a very limited um like sort of musical palette or template to kind of work with and it's very doomy and very very slow like it's slower than ahab like when i showed you that before some of the other doom bands like this is <laughs> right. i had to really and, pick choose and pick like what section to show so that way it's like oh, giving wow. you something <laughs> so I, I love how you only you know got to eight minutes in out of the you know knowing the entire length of the song i mean i listened to the whole thing and i enjoyed well, I it i believe but I that you did I, I believe that you did noise speaks even points out in the chat that they saw them in concert oh and they did this Boy. song live and in full. Like what? The whole set. That's like that's a full set too. Yeah, that's a full set. Yeah, full set. I man, I wish I could have seen that. Oh man, this is so. I love it so much. It's this is definitely good for like, if you need some chill ambient music to do to listen to while working. Like this is it. This is some good stuff. I mean. um, so we'll take a listen here um, at about just under eight and a half minutes in. Super slow, slogging along. Let's go. But like, I got to thinking about how you would make this, and to me, it seems like it's more of just like these songs kind of come together as like very long kind of jam sessions that they probably just have like a little recorder sitting next to they go back and listen to it and then they can kind of restructure things from there okay so that was the other thing i I, the question that i had right is if i know we've talked about long songs or you know bands that have long songs and there still at least is a break right Mm -hmm. where it's like it's a clear stop and this is the next song 
if this is like all one song, yeah, how much do you go into different instrumentation, you know, different tone, different this, different that, which you would normally get into with maybe like, um, you know, a traditional album type cut. Yeah. So they do have kind of like an ebb and flow to the whole thing. So like if you kind of use that as a guide to kind of differentiate, okay, this is where the start and end of one song would be, right? I would say there's a good handful of songs and they're still relatively long, right? But you can definitely hear like it's throughout, like it's, it does have a similar tone throughout, but it does have a nice kind of ebb and flow of, Oh, there was a pretty fast drum fill there. That was, uh, that was too much. Uh, I got to tone it down. <laughs> it's alarming. It's one of those things that like, uh, wakes you up. Oh, huh. Oh man. You know, that's, it's really funny you say that because, um, I started listening to this, um, in bed the other night because like the very beginning of it is very, very chill and ambient almost. And I was like, Oh, this is actually kind of cool. Like I might be able to fall asleep to this. And sure enough, like there was one point where like the drums and the guitars came out. I'm just like, Oh, God. <laughs> like I can't listen to this anymore. I need to go to sleep. <laughs> uh, it's like, Oh man, we're only halfway through. It's 45 minutes. <laughs> Yep. I didn't even, yeah, I didn't even get that far into it. I think I got maybe like 15 or 20 minutes in before I had to be like, okay, like this is a bit too much variance to try and fall asleep to. <laughs> okay. I, I've had a couple like marketable ideas in the back, in my back pocket, you know, for, mm -hmm. for things where it's like someday, mm -hmm. you know, when uh, someone asked me for a million dollar idea w mm -hmm. about metal, I'm just going to pull this out of my pocket and be like, well, what about this? And they'll be like, okay. Um, Sleep Albums has not been on that list. I have another uh, kind of activity that I think you could make a very good uh, soothing metal um, accompaniment to. Ooh. But, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, any guesses? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't, but I'm intrigued. I like where this is going. <laughs> I don't want to give away my million-dollar idea unless someone's going to give me a million dollars. Like, <laughs> All right, well, that'll be something you and I chat offline about. Then. Oh, so you, you want to be a partner now. You want 500K out of this deal. Is that... <laughs> I don't care. I'm man. saying I someone's going to have to make it happen if I do it. That's what I'm saying, right? Okay. So okay. if you're going to be the person that helps me make that happen, we can we can negotiate later. I'll have my people talk to your people. It'll be all fun. right. That sounds good. I can get on board with that. <laughs> but let's just say for this kind of slow droning, um, you know, metal with certain peaks uh, and valleys, like I think okay. uh, I think we got that. Well, I think we're taking filters. shares. I mean, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to some point where we have a startup and then I can hire people from chat, you know, to come and, uh, and help, you know, we need product managers. We need, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, For sure. but, uh, don't worry guys, you'll get early access to shares. And when we, you know, IPO, you'll, you'll get, you'll get tons of money. <laughs> Boom. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, you want to introduce our topic for this week? Yeah. So when, you know, we, we kind of picked this up spur of the moment, right? I think I messaged you just a couple of days ago, you know, and usually we have a little more prep time to like decide what we're going to talk about next, this and that. And I was just like, hey, you know, let's try to get back on track if that's okay with you. So what do you got? And, you know, the couple of things that came to my head, um, mainly probably because of the time that I've been living in was I've heard a lot of sirens. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember a conversation that we had a long time ago where, you know, sirens are just kind of like the lazy person's way to like put an intro in a metal song. Right? It's just like, well, if we just throw a siren in there. Like that'll build some tension. That'll show them like it's serious, you know, like that'll set the tone. Right. Like, That's, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's so yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember talking this about, I'm like, we should just do an episode with nothing but songs that have sirens in them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and when I pitched that, you're like, I think I can pull out enough uh, songs to actually like <laughs> encompass a full episode. And sure enough, we have a full set of songs that have yeah, sirens in them. And, I'm and I tried excited. really hard. I tried really hard too to like stay away from the low picking fruit. Like I knew like two or three off the top of my head, like I knew I was going to go for it. But then the others, oh, yeah. I was just like, I got to look around. But then like I was looking at some lists online. I'm like, nah, these are all popular. Adam's probably going to pick them. So then pick some of them. Yeah. 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 I had to do a little bit of digging, but I was uh, very pleased with what I found. So it, it's it's very important to point out that uh, the type of sirens that these are uh, are mostly air raid sirens. So as Wolfsbane yeah. points out in the chat, it's like <laughs> you can still listen to this while driving. I don't know if it's you know still it's still if you hear an air raid siren, that's still not a good thing to hear. Yeah. <laughs> At least you're not going to be like checking your rearview mirror to see if uh, you're getting pulled over or not. Yeah. Um, 
It almost it's very reminiscent of like a uh, tornado sirens in the Midwest, to be honest. Like they they sound very much the same. So like when I heard that, it's like, oh, it's like a tornado siren. <laughs> you heard a tornado siren? Yeah, it happens in the Midwest all the time. Yeah, I know oh, in that's Wisconsin. Where you came from Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, I know in Wisconsin, in most places in Wisconsin it was like every Wednesday or something like that. <laughs> Uh, they don't have earthquake sirens, so my they, little... Yeah, they really don't. It's just like, wait, didn't we have... I feel like maybe in elementary school, there was some sort of, like, noise that they would do for... There was a not, drill. Not quite a, like, there was, like, fire drill ones, but, like, I feel like there was another one. Maybe they use the same one for, for earthquakes, but... Yeah, most, most school ones are the same tone, right? It's mm-hmm. just a different thing. I mean, <laughs> with the fire drill, you see the fire going and the ground's not shaking, you run out, right? Yeah. <laughs> If the ground's shaking, you get under a desk or a exactly. doorway. That's what they teach you. <laughs> also, those desks would have not prevented anything, right? Like those desks wouldn't have nope. helped. You can't no. cram a bunch of kids under a doorway. The ceiling was coming down. Those kids were going with it. Oh man, <laughs> fast. Um, okay, so so I think we can do our traditional zipper in this case. Um, we don't have any like slackers, <laughs> Adam, um, missing songs. So I, th- I think we can zipper. Um, yeah. I'll let you. Why don't you kick it off? All right, I'll kick it off. So um, the very first song that came to my mind uh, for this particular playlist um, is a song that I actually haven't heard in a very long time. I used to be all about this band shortly after high school. The band is called Primal Fear. Um, They have a song um, called Final Embrace, which is off the album Jaws of Death. Um, In very classic metal fashion, it starts out with uh, an air raid siren at the beginning here. So we'll just start it right from the top. And there it is. It's so simple, but it's just like battle, man. I I love my my tight riffage, man. Don't take away my tight riffage. Don't give me. Don't take away my tight groovy metal riffs. Don't don't do it. Add in the leads, like you got me. I'm good. We're we're, we're fine. Good, good power metal vocals. Oh yeah, dude, we are fully power metal at this point. Fun trivia fact about this vocalist: I believe he tried out for the singer spot for Judas Priest after Rob Halford left, and then. Got beat out by Tim Rippolin. I think that's how the story goes. I see that. I hear that. I should say. Yeah. See, I see the waveforms. I see you. And make it to the chorus here. Hmm. Yeah. See, try out almost, maybe. Almost. Close. There's some other songs of theirs where he can hit those really high notes, just like Halford. Oh, yeah. But it's anywho, I love, <laughs> I love Primal Fear. Just haven't listened to him in a long time. But uh, yeah, check them out. So on my side, you said there are discount picks. And I'm going to get my discount picks out of the way first, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it was funny because I was chatting with a co-worker today. And... Um, you know, they just kind of casually mentioned, you know, what I was doing. And I was like, well, don't tell anyone, but uh, I'm trying to listen to metal songs to uh, find some sirens for tonight's episode. And he's like, oh, well, you got these ones, right? And I'm like, yeah, I got those ones. Like, <laughs> I, was like, I know what I'm doing. Gosh. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I know Black Sabbath War Pigs. Like, I got it. It's fine. So Black Sabbath War Pigs, you know, you have the air raid sign right off the bat. And I figured, like, let's get this one out of the way. Just, you know. Move along. Still a good song. Still nice. classic. But where does the uh, air start? Where where, where it's, it go? It's, it comes in soon. It's not right yeah, away. Yeah, I know. I was like, uh, did I mess up the timestamp? No. But, it does kind of this riffing thing for a little bit, like the slow jam. No. There it is. Yep. 
cue the siren. Black Sabbath did everything in metal before it was cool. <laughs> right. The original hipster. Black OG. Sabbath, the metal hipster. <laughs> OG hipster. Have I told you my hipster coffee joke? No. It's a pretty cheesy one. Okay. You want me to say it? We can. <laughs> I was trying to go for the dramatic timings between the riffs, All right. just for comedic effect. But All right. <laughs> you looked like you were super confused about why I was waiting so long. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. I wasn't sure where I should stop it either. We didn't really like plan this at all, so we're just we're kind of winging it right now. <laughs> Man, that's how you do it. All right, um, tell me your hipster coffee joke. So, why did the hipster burn his tongue? Is he drank the coffee before it was cool. It was cool. <laughs> uh, you need to get your uh, your drum sound effect in there, buddy. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, can I tell the, you didn't can I tell the joke again? I can tell it again. Oh, I think you I think you uh, injured Wolfsbane there. <laughs> it doesn't sound like he's doing good there. <laughs> uh, I can do the sad trombone if you didn't like it. Yeah. So. Uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Yes, hip, hipster coffee, almost as good as my dad joke about uh, coffee, but you know we'll we'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> all right man all right. Back, to, back to your side back to my side so um the next one on my list um was another one that i knew i wanted to go for right away i don't know if i've shown you this band before or if you've discovered them on your own um but they're kind of like um an instrumental like they're all instrumental they're almost genty but like not super genty in a way um, the band is called Cloud Kicker. I was actually introduced to this band a long time ago from my wife because she had seen them in concert before. Um, but they've got a song called uh, Cla- excuse me, Genesis Device off of the album The Discovery. Um, and again, just right at the beginning, just like um, a lot of these here, um, we hear that air raid siren. Now we're doing that there. Now, okay, there are only so many air raid samples you can find, right? Do you find any repeats or any, like, clear, obvious? Not specifically. Like, they all have their slight variations a little bit. So it does kind of make me wonder where they are getting their air raid samples from. (laughs) Are they picking them themselves? Or, like, are they? do they get a sample library somewhere or what? (laughs) Yeah, gotta be a sample. Where do the samples come from? But you definitely showed me this band. Okay. It, I didn't discover it on my own. It was giving me way too much credit. Okay. Almost reminds me a little bit of August Burns Red now that I hear it again, because it's been a long time. Like, if it was instrumental August Burns Red, I think. <laughs> you can't you can't do that to me without prepping. There's two. Oh, yep. That's why I forgot you set up these <laughs> commands. There's two of them, man. But um, it just kind of like rides on this for a little bit and then kind of goes into some other sections. Um, yeah, man. You had to break it up with something, you know? Yeah. So do the air siren first. Yeah. Here we go. We got a little bit of lead in there. All right. We chugged along. Yeah. All right. So that, that's Cloud Kicker. I think they're pretty cool. You should check them out. Check it out. All right. So um, back on my side, let's take another discount pick, uh, if we will. Um, so this one is actually really funny because it's a very, very short sample. Like it's very, very faint. Like you, you, if, you, if you don't pay attention, you might miss it. Uh, and it's uh, from Motorhead, and the song is Emergency. And they, they have an air raid siren in the beginning, uh, but if you're not paying attention, you may just miss it because it's it's not like a long, drawn-out like uh, thing going on. All right. Everyone, just be quiet. Let's listen. Yep. 
It's pretty short. It's still kind of in the background a little bit, but it sounds like it's fading out. Yeah. I got a, I got a showcase. Oh yeah, there he is. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good old Motorhead. Yeah. Motorhead was a band like I didn't get like too far into, but like, I don't know, maybe I should go back and kind of work through their discography. He's still dancing. <laughs> hey man, it's still going. What do you want? <laughs> He'll keep <laughs> You made him go away. Oh no. Yeah, that's good. But yeah, uh, so like you don't have to like wait for the air raid siren to completely introduce you. You know, as with Motorhead, great, great, because, you know, they just got to the point. They got their song out out there. They got it. They got it done. They didn't have to drag it on for an hour and 30 minutes. Yeah. Hey, now. <laughs> uh, that's all right. That's all right. Um, anything else you want to say about Motorhead? Are we good? Listen to Motorhead. Listen to Rip Motorhead. Lemmy. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like a happy and sad thing at the same at the same time. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, good old Lemmy. Sad panda. Yeah. All right. Back over to my side here. Um, the next band I want to feature um, is a band called Belfagor. I think we've talked about them before. We probably talked about it, but never actually featured them. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. So this particular song that I'm choosing um, off the album, Walpurgis writes, um, the song is called Der Geistertreiber. And I chose this song because one, I knew it had a siren in it. And two, um, when I was still in college in Wisconsin, taking a bunch of German classes, I took one class about Austria, uh, where this band is from. And um, at the end of the semester, we had to do like a group project. So you had to basically pick like, one state in Austria and pick a topic and then you just like do this group project around that. Right. So my partner and I, we chose music and we chose like three different categories of music. Um, and we chose Salzburg and that's where Belfagor is from. So of course, one of our sections about music in Salzburg was extreme metal. That was all me. So this is one of the songs that I chose and I played it for everyone in class and it was hilarious to see their reactions. Um, <laughs> I think I showed them the music video too. And the music video is like really, yeah. <laughs> really questionable. <laughs> hey guys, here you go. <laughs> um, but um, this song, their guys are, yeah, <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Luckily we're in college and we're all adults, so it's all good. <laughs> Uh, so their Geister Triber about uh, 50 seconds in um, is when we get um, the siren here. So give me one second to get that queued up. Here's that. Come on now. Work with me. Cool. All right. And play. <laughs> This one actually comes in on the chorus. It's not at the beginning. Oh, twist. I like it. I don't remember if when you were doing this, you sent me the music video saying that you were going to show this. I feel like I might have. That sounds I don't familiar. remember if I watched this music video or not. It's, it's weird. It's real weird. It's like very occulty. Like out in the forest, there's like... A uh, woman playing a witch who's like wearing next to nothing. There's like blood and everything everywhere. Just what you would expect from like a black and death metal band. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a black metal band. Okay, cool. But Delta Gore is cool. They're fun. They got some pretty cool songs. Their uh, vocal style is pretty harsh compared to another band. Or like, or like it sounds more verbally, I guess I would say. <laughs> Another <Gurgly>? that <laughs> How would you describe this vocalist sound? Oh, I'd say he has a very good gurgly voice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, gurgly guys gurgles. gurgles. Yeah, I <laughs> mean, like, I gurgle so good. <laughs> so, oh no, okay. Do you ever remember that, speaking of, like, weird videos, do you ever remember that, that uh, movie, that unbeknownst to mini Disney movie, The Black Cauldron. Do you remember that? 
That does sound familiar. Yeah, I don't remember if I've seen it or not, though. So this is before Disney had their renaissance and realized that they could sell princess movies to millions of people and they would, you know, just pay out the, you know, wazoo to, you know, watch it. Uh, and they were still trying to do like weird, just random fairy tales, but they went through a kind of like a dark phase, right? Mm-hmm. This is like their angsty teenage years. Um, so they made this movie in the eight, late 80s, I want to say, called The Black Cauldron. And one of the the characters' names is Gurgi. Gurgi. So when you said Gurgly. <laughs> That's what you thought of. <laughs> you immediately thought of, A, since we're talking about black death metal, the Black Cauldron, which features this guy, like, full skull face, horn thing going on, you know, like, trying to get hold of this Black Cauldron to release, like, armies of the undead against the world. Yeah. And... This stupid little, you know, like uh, Olaf comic relief character is named Gurgi. So Gurgly yes. Black Cauldron got me thinking about Gurgly Black Death Metal. That's really funny. I totally remember this. Um, I think I may have seen it once, like a long time ago. But I'm just looking it up on IMDb now. And yeah, this is totally coming back. When was it made? <laughs> was, was I right with late 80s? Yeah, uh, mid 80s, 85. 85? Two years before? Yeah. Gosh. Or Disney, they were lost until the '90s, man. Yeah, it wasn't until they did Little Mermaid that they finally Little got Little Mermaid. Story. That like, yeah, that was like their revival. No, beginnings. they call it the Renaissance. They call the it the Renaissance. Yes, Renaissance. the Disney okay. Renaissance. There are actual things about this on Casual Dads. I have to go through a did like a Disney versus Pixar bracket of choosing my favorite Disney movies. Uh, oh, which is Lion King. Come at me, like it's fine. Lion King is the best Disney movie. Actually, like now that I take now that I say it, Emperor's New Groove is the best uh, Disney movie. Hmm. That's a hard one for me. Like, I think I have two different ways of categorizing that. I think I have one, like, favorite because of, like, the soundtrack, and then one favorite just overall. I'll send you the bracket. I'll, once okay. once we have the bracket post, I'm, like, kind of teasing Casual Dad's podcast stuff now, so I shouldn't really do oh, that. Oh, okay. Okay. No um, worries. Let's pop yeah, over so, to your side of the uh, the playlist yes. here. So um, I'm going to go with another discount pick for me, at least discount for, for Adam's side, which is Slipknot. Uh, and they have a song called Pulse of the Maggots, which is off volume three of the Subliminal Verses. And this one was kind of like, because I listened to this album so much when I was an angsty teenager, like this one was just burned in my brain. Like, so when we said siren songs, I'm like, uh, well, duh, this one, you know, yep. uh, it's definitely in there. And Corey Taylor's doing his Corey Taylor thing, you know, like giving this whole speech about, you know, like uh, uprising and, you know, um, this is the year where everything changes, you know, like blah, blah, blah. It's pretty cool uh, listening to it now. Like it's one of those things where metal always kind of seems to mold and fit to the uh, your mood or how you want to interpret things. And you can always like read things different ways. And I think, you know, this intro is one that I can kind of read different ways. Uh, and I read it, you know, in today's tone and I was like, okay, I can see how this would be kind of uplifting, but it doesn't start off that way. Yeah. 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 But classic air siren. So they are very similar, but like sometimes like it holds the, the pitch for a while and then releases. Others like it's a very sine wave kind of pitch shift. Yeah, you, you gotta wonder if, if any of this is done in post, right? Like you think they all get the same sample and they're like, okay, well we gotta change it, you know, because <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's some easy way of like synthesizing this type of sound either. I mean, like you said, it's just a sine wave. Or at least, like, Some it's like a sine pitch. wave as far as, like, how the pitch is changing over time, right? But, like, the actual tone that's being generated, like, it's probably, like, a combination of tones or something. And you get the crowd chant in there? Crowd pleasers. That's another one we're going to have to do. Uh, yep, yep. So the ones with crowd involvement. Yeah. DJ here. And then, this is not Eileen. What happened? Yeah, I know. I, I felt so let down when <laughs> Volume 3 came out. I was just like, man, like, Iowa was like, the heaviest thing in existence at that time, at least in the mainstream sort of metal scene. And then like that came out just like, come on, what happened to your guitar tone? It sucks now. <laughs> yeah. I, know. <sighs> I know. That's okay. That's okay. It's okay. It's okay. 
we went through the stone sour phases and then we did that for many, many years. <laughs> yes. Yes. And now we Very have a so. CMFT, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. <laughs> no, okay, good. <laughs> but back over to my side of the playlist here. Um, the last two songs that I have were ones that I kind of had to look up because I didn't know how else to to fill out my playlist here without picking low hanging fruit. Um, so the next band I'm going to feature is uh, I think it's Vride or Vreed. I still don't know the correct pronunciation of this band. I before E except after C or when it sounds like A as in neighbor oh. and Vraid. Oh my gosh, Vraid. Okay, yeah, maybe that that's would make using sense. English. Too. I don't know if that's actually. So I did read on like Wikipedia or something that um, the actual name comes from archaic Norwegian, which I don't know if that's an actual thing or like they just <laughs> decided to say it to be edgy or whatever. Because, but I mean, they it could be legit. I have no idea. I'm not familiar Dude, with when you're any... making band names. You know that you're just supposed to tack on adjectives. So maybe they were just doing the same thing for effect. <laughs> anyway, so like the band name uh, in apparently archaic Norwegian means wrath. Okay, that's pretty common amongst metal bands. I think we talked about that before with a very similar looking uh, word structure even too. Anyway, um, they've got a song off the album Solverve. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, the song is called Freedom Med Dowden's Clang. Clung? I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, but here again, they do more of like the uh, right at the beginning um, sort of air raid siren here. So give me one second to get it queued up. And there we go. We get some church bells in this one too. Oh, church bells and air raid combo. Monster combo. Yeah. Oh, that's Unreal oh, Tournament. Tr- monster kill is Unreal Tournament. Yeah. Monster kill. Kill. That's the one. That's the one. And it's ultra, ultra, ultra. Um, killer instinct. That was killer <laughs> instinct. Yes. Yes. kind of like this build up here but we I think we only get that one air raid siren I know I always forget they exist too and then they always show up in some sort of radio like artist radio that I'm listening to or some playlist I'm just like dang it every time <laughs> how do they keep forgetting you exist how is that a thing that happens yeah I forget how long this intro is so we'll give it just a little bit longer here see if it Six guitars. Forget the band exists. You forget how long the intros are. Like I get it, you know. It's it's one of the things that happens with some bands. They're all the way at V at the bottom, you know. They really right are, man. W where all the other ones come in, you know. <laughs> like they're in this obscure category. Okay, nice I'm feeling Killer Instinct vibes now, you know. Oh yeah, dude, I am too figure out a way we can play that <laughs> killer instinct <laughs> yeah and stream it <laughs> we, already, we already did we did video game music no 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 no, no. like the actual you. game the actual game you and i playing and streaming it oh wow we can, do that. we can figure it out we'll figure it out so okay song's it's over. Take- <laughs> uh, no, it's a nine-minute song. We're only two minutes in, so all right, it's probably going to take a long time to build though. up. Yeah, I mean, if we're past ten percent, then you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, what's on your list next? So, um, when you know you mentioned that you went and looked at a couple lists, um, I I also went scouring the internet for for maybe some songs that I might have missed, and mm-hmm. this one came up and. The reason it came up is because people were searching for a Metallica song that had an air raid siren. And I'm like, I don't know if they had air raid sirens. I know they had like in one, they had the battleship and, you know, like, or the battle, you know, sounds and stuff like that. But I don't know if they had air raid sirens. I'm like, no, no, it's definitely like a Metallica thing. Come to find out it's this band called Imminent Destruction, who's like a heavy generic brand Metallica. 
like it's the best way I could put it. They're like, you know, it's the... really interesting because considering like Metallica is already kind of generic. <laughs> yeah. Like, but this is like generic, generic Metallica, right? Like this is the, the Walgreens store brand, you know, Metallica. Um, and the, the song is eternal decision and it starts off with an air raid siren, but I'm like, how did someone confuse this with Metallica? Cause it starts off kind of heavy, heavier than you would think of Metallica. Right. Mm-hmm. But then vocals kick in and you're like, Oh, oh, that's oh, it. I get it. I that's get it. it. So we'll take a look <laughs> to, to discount uh, generic brand Metallica here. Uh, imminent destruction. Um, and you'll hear the siren. You'll, you'll hear cool. it. Yeah, this, one's so copy, man. this one's a copy. This, this one has to be a copy. Like maybe some slight filtering or EQing to change it up, but okay, I can hear the old school Metallica in there. Yeah, you can. It's just like you'll, you'll you'll hear the next one. Everything you said was 100% spot on. <laughs> spot on, dude. This is... Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't say anything else about it, man. That, like, that's it. <laughs> Adam.exe failed. <laughs> this game over, man. Oh, my God. That's gonna be fun to watch that uh that playthrough back again to see my face because I know what my face did but I don't know how it looked. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> All right, I'm I'm done, dude. I can't oh, yeah, do it anymore. <laughs> So when I went to this random, you know, forum that someone was asking, like, hey, what's that Metallica song with that air raid siren? And they're like, uh, I don't know. It's maybe it's off these albums. He's like, no, it's definitely a Metallica song. He's like, oh, I found out what it is. And then oh, they gosh. post it. And I'm like, all right, let me hear this thing. And then I hear it. I'm like, OK, OK. And then I heard the vocals again. And I, I just lost it. And it's like, I have to I have to do this. I have to do this. When did this um, come out? Uh, like 96, I think. I want to say. Oh, so that's well after the Black album. Yeah, like, no, this is like Unforgiven, like re- load reload days. You know, it um, almost sounds like uh, like some portions of at least vocally, like some portions of um, and Justice for All. Like oh, the no, short don't do straw. That. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. No. Okay. No. What are you doing? All right. I'm sorry. I'm saying, all right. I'm done. No. I'm done. I'll, I'll let it be. I'll drop it. Ouch. I don't want to hurt ouch, you. Ouch. I know, man. <laughs> don't, don't be crapping on. Uh, Wolf Spain pointed out in the chat, like Disturbed has some too. Yeah, that was definitely on, on the on the list. I think like Indestructible has like an air raid mm-hmm. siren in That's it. That's right. Yep. Yeah. There's there's a, there's a couple Disturbed songs. There's a couple more mainstream ones, but yeah. oh boy. Okay, man. Uh, I've taken my Walgreens suit to Fed, so uh, back over to your side. <laughs> All right, cool. So last pick for my side here um, is a band I haven't heard before, but um, now that I have heard them, I kind of want to listen to more of them. Um, the band is called Ivenberg or Evenberg. I'm not sure the correct pronunciation. Um, the song is called Wunden or Wunden, maybe, off of the same album. So we got a title track again. I feel like I've been doing a lot of those lately. <laughs> You've hit like one in every single episode that we've recorded, I think. Almost. Maybe since we've talked about... Uh, title tracks. Maybe since you figured out what title tracks were, right? Or like, yeah, that that was the name for it. <laughs> um, I don't think we. But, I don't think either of us knew. I think we just kind of. <laughs> oh, it's like the song with the same album title <laughs> in that album. Like the title track. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, right. that does make sense. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, they do. They kind of have a little bit more of atmosphere that builds up in the beginning of this song. So we'll start at about 30 seconds in right before um, the air raid siren comes in. But it's really um, it's 
borderline morbid in a way, like the way they kind of set this up. Like, I'll just let you hear it and then we can maybe discuss it. So um, here we go at about 30 seconds in. Let me get it queued up. Uh, let me pause that for a second. And over here. All right, unmute that, unmute that. Boom. Um, what? And then we get a super fast, awesome riff. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm good. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> that's that's uh that's what I needed. But then again, another kind of like rashy black metal band. Conditioned me for something way worse, man. Like, I don't know if you just desensitized me from the kind of this kind of the stuff, but uh, <laughs> your your uh, your eerie smile there uh, makes me feel like that was your plan all along. No, uh, you call it desensitizing. I call it broadening your horizons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, uh, I guess you could call it broadening people's horizons when you radicalize them. I'm getting him to think a different way, maybe. <laughs> uh, uh, so my side? <laughs> yeah, let's go over to your side. Let's try so, okay, to guys, a little bit of this. <laughs> if you're still feeling a little bit of um of a head cold and you took your, you know, generic Walgreens Sudafed and you're still congested, well, maybe you should stick to brand name. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what a what a build up. <laughs> so, much like imminent destruction was not doing it for me. Like I need some brand name Metallica, you know, to clear my sinuses. Uh and the difference is clear because brand name Metallica, when they choose to use air sirens, it's not at the beginning of the track, like an intro track. Come on, you amateurs, get on the same level. They mix it up. We're gonna do it in the outro. How does that sound? So nice. Off of Ride the Lightning, the song Escape, in the outro, they start put throwing in the air siren. And they start throwing it in on top of, you know, the, the guitar riffs. And they'll just kind of let it go for a bit. But in the outro, guys, guys, let's just literally flip the script. What? Here we go. This is the outro. What up with an air siren where? And if we continue with this sort of, like, uh medicine analogy here right like you can't go with the brand name and just like expect that when it kicks in immediately that it's just going to be gone for good right that's not how it works it's a slow build for it to actually function and do what it's supposed it's to long lasting it's the eight hour relief man like yes. you got it <laughs> <the imminence. laughs> it's still it's there, there right it's, it's still working, right? Like you get the high dose to kick the symptom, but then you get the sustain to keep it from coming back, man. This is how drug companies work. I know this. I worked in a pharmacy. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, right on. Did that so, close out your uh, siren head cold? Yeah, you good? Yeah, yeah. My head cold is completely gone now. Thank oh, you very perfect. much for that. Perfect. So um, I, I just want to say that uh, a lot of the songs we mentioned, a lot of them, were actually uh, already in a list, funny enough. Um, <laughs> and I don't know if you found the same list that I did, uh, but shout outs to uh, Pong Sifu, who made a list of songs. There was like a, almost 100 tracks in there, and they all basically hey. were all the songs with Air Raid Sirens. Hang on, hang on. I got to check my phone. I looked this up on my phone today to search all these songs, so I think I still have that tab open. Let me see. There's the link in the outline. You could just click that, you know? Well, you know, I never like to take the easy route, Adam. Jeez. Just saying. I know you like your generic uh, oh link finding. God. This is the exact same list I looked at. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, because when you search for things like what metal songs have air raid sirens in them, 
even Google's like, I can only find you like three results that are relevant. Do you want to look at one of these three? And I'm like, yeah, I guess so. You know, there are uh, some on here that I totally thought um, you were going to pick that you didn't. And I was really and surprised. And I strayed away from them because they were on this list already. <laughs> <laughs> I totally thought you were probably going to go for like bolt thrower, um, drowning pool. I thought Did you were probably going to bring up War again. Was on there too. Yeah, um, Mana War. Oh, yep, there's Indestructible. Number 20 from Disturbed. Who else was on here? Yeah. A lot and of I mean, stuff I hadn't heard before. Right. So so props to this guy who came up with like this huge list of uh, of songs. This guy or girl or person. Whoever, uh, yeah. This list of songs, yeah. Because um, they had it covered. So if you if you want a more exhaustive list than what we have, we filled in a couple blanks that they may, may not have had. But if you want a full list, we'll include it in the show notes. And uh, I should uh, put it in chat. Or you can put it in chat. Someone can put it in chat. Someone can put it in chat. I'll have to open it up in a different window because I, I got, have it on I my other you. computer here. Okay, thanks. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, cool, man. Yeah. Um, so, do you have... Up? Yeah, wrap up. Do you have any updates on your music production for your Guilty Gear? <sighs> Unfortunately, not yet. So everything that was um, done on the stream from last week, that's as far as I'm at right now. But it's just because I've been busy with work. Um, the next step in the process is to kind of like zhuzh up the drums, so to speak. So don't <laughs> keep it ex- zhuzh them up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I definitely... I want to make them more interesting. I want to make them more metal based because the way it sits right now, it does feel a little stale, not quite as interesting as it could be. And like a lot of the Guilty Gear covers I have heard, the drums are doing some really cool stuff. So I feel like I've got to kind of keep up with that in in a way Um, without going overboard. I still want to make it sound like a real drummer is playing it, even though it's just a a drum machine. (laughs) (laughs) I want to make them not think it's a robot. I want it to pass the Turing test. I yeah. want my drums to pass. Yeah, so it's awesome that um, we had some people tune in for that and that people are liking it. So I'm thinking the next time I do get that time, I'll probably just stream it again, whatever time that may be, and I'll I'll make a post beforehand to kind of prepare people, maybe give them like a day or two notice just to, if I can foresee that in my schedule. Um, but yeah, I totally had a lot of fun. Um, and I think there's a few things I could do differently routing wise. Cause I think with my microphone, I was getting some, uh, some rice krispies, so to speak. <laughs> so trademark, I think I know. Trademark, yeah. Man. Come on, come on now. <laughs> uh, crispy rice. I had some crispy you rice know. in there. <laughs> you stick with generic That's the rinse, generic one. Like, the generic <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> All about the cheap way out on this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'll definitely uh, make some posts about that when that happens, but I definitely want to do that again. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. I Anything else we want to discuss and wrap up before we hit the after show? 